Obviously, we can see why Pharaoh is so devastated. These locusts cover the whole ground until it is black. Can you imagine the whole land looking black? These locusts devour all that was left out of the hill. They devour everything growing in the fields. They devour all the fruit on the trees. And nothing green remains on any tree or plant in the land of Egypt. The whole land of Egypt. Can you see? It was so devastating. The economy is gone. They are going to end up in hunger. That you can see why Pharaoh finally says, "Uh uh-uh, this time I have sinned. Pharaoh quickly summoned Moses and Aaron and said, I have sinned against the Lord, your God, and also against you. In other words, I realize not only do I trust God, but I also am not showing any respect to the people God is using. And now I know I'm wrong in both counts. Now forgive my sin once more and pray to the Lord your God to take the deadly plague away from me. Once more means he admits that he has cheated before. Once more means he knows that they are remembering. Last time he said it and then he changed his mind. And you know your credibility is at stake. That's why he's having to plead with Aaron and Moses. My friend, the worst thing you can lose is being trusted. Because as soon as you have lost your credibility, you have difficulties with your juniors and you have difficulties with your seniors. Trust is the most important thing in leadership like you have discussed before. You need to make sure that your yes is yes and your no. But I also note this idea of Pharaoh seeing that you have sinned against man and against God. That's one of the problems we have ourselves. We do not see that the two are not exactly the same, but they are related. Every sin against man is also a sin against God. So if you look down on the person, you are unlikely to see your sin. And if you can't see what you have done wrong is accurate, wrong, you not say sorry to the person, you are likely to get a conviction about the God of the person. It is when you become somebody who is sensitive about how you deal with, that, with God's creation, with God's people. And once you realize you do not want to hurt people, when you hurt them, you not only say sorry to them, you also say sorry to their God. Many of us are living lives that are hurting others and yet we think we are in good books with the god it can't work you cannot be hurting your family hurting your subordinates and because you are praying and fasting you start thinking you are okay now if you truly are okay you need to understand that sinning against human beings is at the same time a way of showing that you are sinning against God. Because God loves them. For God so loved the world. He loves those people. And if you hurt the people he loves, you will also be hurting him. Learn to treat people well. Learn to treat your team well. And although they may not treat you well in return, you will be in good books with their God. Now forgive my sin once more and pray to the Lord you are God to take this deadly plague away from me. Another thing I want us to note is that Pharaoh is aware that the curse, although it's pronounced by man, man's pronouncement cannot hurt you. It is God that will finally hurt you. So he's saying, Pray to the Lord, forgive me, yes, but pray to your God to take this deadly plague away from me. And that's what so many of us miss. That your parents' curse is not what hurts you. 
It is the fact that God has instructed you to honor your father and your mother. And you have failed to honor them. So your trouble will not come from your parents. Even if they don't curse you, you still have trouble with the God of your parents. It's to learn that the meaning of Proverbs when it says a curse that's not deserved cannot hold. It's because curses are useless when they are from man. They gain their power because of the spirit. So Pharaoh understands that this problem is not from Aaron or Moses. It is from the God of Aaron and Moses. So even if they change their mind, it will not be due. They need to pray to God who brought the curse, who brought the plague to stop it. Do you understand that? Do you go to your pastor and expect him to give you a blessing as a pastor? Or do you understand that your pastor is not a source of blessing? Any blessing you get, it will only really come through the pastor. It will not originate from the pastor. Similarly, he can threaten to curse you. But do you understand the curse will not come from him? For it to hold, it must be a curse that God has actioned. So this week we are learning that God keeps his word. He keeps his promise. Whether that promise is about doing good to us and our people, or is destroying us or our people, he certainly will keep the promise. And Pharaoh understood that this Jehovah is a promise keeping. He doesn't give empty threats. He keeps what he has promised to do, whether good or evil. And we have said, you also need to look at your at yourself and understand that you can't ignore God's word. You can't say, oh, he is too good to punish. When he has promised to punish, punish he will. Otherwise, you no longer be just. Second, we have learned that... Um, it's good to repent, not because you are in pain, but because you know the God of the pain. That way, it will help you not to be falling into pain in order to cry to God. Because if it's God you are trusting, then he gives you, when he tells you what he's going to do, you believe him. So you will not add up in the punishment. So we have learned that you need to trust in God himself. And that way you will avoid many punishments that people are going to receive. And thirdly, that you must understand, like Pharaoh did, that blessings and curses do not come from men of God, like Aaron and Moses. They come from God. So the solution is not a word from the pastor or a word from the apostle. It's a prayer that they should pray for you so that the source of blessing will provide the blessings to you. Finally, if they get relief, the locusts are gone, but Pharaoh again hardens his heart. So the next plague is of darkness. Exodus 10 verse 23. No one could see anyone else or move about for three days. Yet all the Israelites had light in the places where they lived. What a plague. Darkness. Those who live in towns are not aware of the kind of darkness those of us who 